This is the second video of the Rollaball tutorial based on Unity's Rollaball. So by now you should have a floor created, a play area, either by yourself or by following the first video. A link to the first video can be found in the description if you need to back up a little bit. So in this one, we're going to make a player, control it using code and Unity's new input system, and also make the camera follow it. So let's go ahead and make a new player. Now, since it's Rollaball, I'm going to add a sphere by clicking plus 3D object sphere. I'm going to rename it player. Now notice right now it's below the play field. And part of the problem is that I need to reset the transform position. So over in the inspector, I'm going to notice these are not zero. I'm going to click on these three dots and say reset. Now that brings it up a bit but I still need to increase the Y. I'm going to do 0 0.5, and that will bring it up above the play field. I also want this to have a material, so I'm gonna go into materials, and I will make a new material, create material. I'm gonna call it player, and I'm going to assign the albedo to change the color. I'll make it yellow for this. And once again, just drag it to the player in the scene or in the hierarchy to assign it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on player in the hierarchy. And the other thing I need to do is add a rigid body component to the player. I need to do that so it can interact with things and have physics applied to it. So I'm going to go in the inspector, click on add component, and I can just search for rigid body if it's not coming up already. So rigid body, and I want the rigid body. So it added that there. Okay, so let's add some movement. Now the first thing I need to do, since I'm using the new input system and not the one that's just kind of the legacy one that comes with Unity built in, I need to go to Window Package Manager. In the pop-up window at the top, and it might change depending on the version of Unity as things progress, but right now it shows me the packages that are in my project and I want to check out all that Unity has. So I'm going to Unity Registry. Now I'm gonna search for Input System. So I'm gonna scroll down and go to Input System and I will need to install it. Now it's gonna come up with a little warning saying that it's going to disable the old Unity Engine Input APIs. And when it does that, just go ahead and say yes. And I do want to save changes that I made because Unity is going to restart. Once it's restarted, we should now have in my project the input system, and I can go ahead and close this. Now the other thing I need to do is add a player input component to my player. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my player in the hierarchy scroll down and add component and I'm going to look for player input and there it is. Inside of this I now need to create a player action asset so I'm going to click on create actions and I'm just going to save this in assets. I guess say player input and say save kind of like the built-in um, input section that Unity had before. Over here, it identifies what will control the move, right? What parts on our keyboard will control the move, look, fire, things like that. At this point, I can go ahead and close this. Now to get anything to actually work, I need to write a script. So I'm gonna go back into assets and I'm going to be making several scripts. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a folder. So I'm gonna create folder and call it scripts. And inside of there, I'm going to make a script called player controller. So I'm gonna right click in that, create C sharp script. Name it player controller. Now I wanna point something out. If you're familiar with Unity, You've seen this before, but if you're new to it, something that's very important is that the name of your c -sharp script needs to exactly match the name of your class. So take a peek and make sure it matches. We are going to need to take this and drag it to the player to assign the script. 
If it doesn't work, those two names may be different. So I'm going to go ahead and drag it and it should work. If it doesn't, I'm going to go ahead and open the script and show you what to take a peek at. If it gives you some sort of error saying it can't attach it, just double check when you open your script that the name of your class exactly names what's here. Sometimes this still says new behavior script and you just need to change the name of your class, save it, and then try dragging again. All right, so back in our script, we need to access our input system by adding a directive at top. So I'm going to say at the top here, using unity engine dot input system and add a semicolon at the end. Inside our script, we're going to be adding a method called onMove to our player controller to allow our input system to move our player. The reason I'm saying onMove is that it's built into the input system. In Unity, if I click on player, in player input, it lists all the different built-in methods that it will send a message to when it gets moving input. And one of them is on move. So back here, actually I'm going to put this after start. I'm going to make a new method. I'm going to write void on move parentheses. Then I want to get the input value from the input system and I will assign it to a variable called movement value. And then I want open and closing curly braces to hold this information. Inside of here, I want to create a vector2 variable and store the x and y movement values in it. And to do that, I will say vector2. I'm going to call it movement vector equals movement value dot get. And inside of angle brackets, I want vector2 parentheses semicolon. So that takes the vector2 coming from the input value and it signs it to a vector2 called movement vector. Now I want to be able to break apart the x and y movement, which actually will become x and z. And I need to store that in a couple of variables. So up in the class, but not in the methods, I'm going to create two private variables. So this will hold movement x and movement y. Back in on move, I'm going to set movement x and movement y to the values collected in this vector too. So I'll take the movement vector with the x value and put it in movement x, and take the movement vector y and put it into the variable movement y. Okay, so now we have the input information, but we want to be able to control the rigid body. So I need to set a reference and code to that. So also up here, I'm going to make a variable that will hold a reference to the rigid body. So I'm going to say private rigid body, and I'll just call it RB as in rigid body. And that will be referring to the player object. In start, I want to be able to grab the component of rigid body from our player and assign it to RB. That way we can just refer to it with the shortcut RB. Now that we have the input value separated into the X and Y, and we also have a reference to the rigid body, we need to add code to actually apply this to the player. Since we'll be using physics, we don't want to just use regular update, we want to use something called fixed update. And in fixed update, we are going to set the movement of the X and Z variables meaning that in our world x is left and right, y is up and down, and z is forward and backward. So we will be only adjusting the x and the z values. So in fixed update, we will set the movement to the x and z variables. We will keep y at 0. And to do this, we're going to make a new vector3 variable called movement. So I have vector3 movement, that's making a new movement variable, and it's making a new vector3 with the x being pulled from movement x, y we're keeping at 0 because we don't want to move up and down, and z is actually movement y from our vector2 input. And then we just need to add some force. So rb is our rigid body, add force, 
movement, which is our vector 3. I'm going to save this, and let's go back to Unity to try it out. should be able to hit play, and I can use my arrow keys to move it. But notice the ball is really slow. So we can speed it up. Let's add some code to do that. So back in our class, I'm going to add this just to the top. I'm going to say public float so it can hold a decimal. Speed. And let's start at 10. Since it's a float, I'm going to say 10.0. And I'm adding an F so there's no confusion. If you try to put a decimal in without the F, it'll give you an error and it'll think that it won't understand that you want it to be a float. So you just need to put that F in and it'll work. Now, down in fixed update, I can just say movement times speed and it will be much faster. I'm going to save this, go back to Unity, and try it out. Much better. I'm going to hit stop, but notice in player, if I scroll down here and look at the player controller, because speed was a public variable, I can then adjust it in the inspector and try out different values. It's just a lot easier for debugging. So now let's add some code so that the camera can follow the player. Now, in some cases, you can just have a camera follow a player by just dragging it underneath and attaching it as a child to the object. But in this case, it won't work very well since this will spin. Just a warning, it's going to look kind of weird. So I'm going to hit play, and when I move it, notice it, it follows the rotation too. I'm going to hit stop so we don't get all dizzy. So I'm going to put this back. So instead, we're going to write some code. I'm going to go ahead and make another script in my scripts folder. Right click, create C sharp script. I'm going to call this camera controller. And if you can imagine, I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the main camera. Let's go look at this script. So in this script, I'm going to create two variables, one to reference the player object and one to hold the vector three offset, which will determine the distance to keep the camera away from the player. So I'm going to put that in the class, but above the methods. So I have a public game object called player, and then I have a private vector three called offset. I need to make this game object public so that I can assign the player to it in the inspector. In start, I'm going to determine the offset between the camera and the player and store it. So I'm going to be taking the transform position of the camera and subtracting the player's transform position and storing it into offset. And then in update, change the code to add this. So it will then set the transform position of the camera to the player's transform position plus the offset. So it'll move the camera along with the player. I'm going to save this script and go back to Unity. Now for this to work, I need to click on the main camera and look at my camera controller in the inspector. Notice player, it says none, game object. So I need to say what the player is. I'm going to click on the player's game object in the hierarchy and drag it to this spot in the inspector. Alternately, there's this little selector dot, and I can click on it, and in the scene, I can choose what object I would like to assign. So I could do it that way, too, if I don't want to drag. So let me hit play, and when it runs, it should now move the camera along with the player. In the next video, we'll be adding collectible objects checking collision with the player, and having the object disappear when it collides.